Okay, good morning. All right, so today we're going to look at the、um, second part of the section on lines and planes, and then start a new, the next section. So this is 12.5 to start,、uh, still on lines and planes. And we're going to be doing a few in, more interesting examples involving lines and planes. And to start, let's do a very quick review of what the equations of lines and planes are. Let's write it this way: line through the point. With the direction given by the vector. Call that A, B, and C for simplicity. Is given in the vector form. Yeah. Whoa, that's not good.、Um, is that better? Good. Thanks. I I should look up more often, but uh, uh, if I don't catch that, make sure you let me know. All right. So this is the line equation of, of a line going through this point with that direction, written in the vector form. Here, are the x, y, z components.、Right. We saw this last time. Just a very quick review of that. And similarly, for a plane that goes through the point. With a vector that's orthogonal to the plane, given as n is equal to a b c again. I、right, remember that the two forms, the two equations are pretty similar. You both deal in both cases we deal with a point and a vector. The difference is which way the vector is pointing. For a line, we need to know which way we're going. For a plane, we need to know which way this vector.、Uh, the, The vector is orthogonal to the plane, and the difference here for a plane, the equation is not a vector anymore. Okay, and that comes from the fact that you dot. If you do the dot product of that vector n with any vector in that plane, you're going to get a zero because they are perpendicular. Okay, so this we already know. Just a very quick review of that, and we're going to need to use both of these equations for the examples we are about to do. Okay, I'm going to put this over here. Let's start with this example. Let's find the equation of a line that goes through five, three, four, and it is perpendicular to the plane. X minus y plus two z is equal to eight. Okay, the equation of a line through a point, and this line happens to be perpendicular to the plane given by x minus y plus two z. Let's try to visualize what's going on here. Here's our plane.
Okay, so can anyone give me what the vector that is perpendicular to this plane would be? Right, and how do you know that? Exactly, you look at the coefficients of x, y, z, right? That tells you the uh, direction of the vector that's orthogonal to the plane. Looking at the equation on the previous page, simply looking at the coefficients of a, b, c, uh, x, y, z, you can find out what a, b, c are. So here, this is 1, minus 1, and 2. What does this 8 do? By the way, why is it not 0? Looking at the standard form of the equation, the right-hand side is a 0 for a plane. Why is there an 8 over here? Yeah, it's the product of A times x sub 0, y sub 0, and z sub 0 moving to the other side, right? So this 8 contains some information about the point on the plane which we may or may not need, but for now, the most important thing we need to find is that, uh, that vector. Okay, and then we got this line that goes through this plane, and let's say the line goes over here. So here's the line. Call that L. And this line is going to go through this point, 5, 3, 4. Okay, so that's a situation here, a plane given by some equation and a line given by some other situation. And this line we know is going to be perpendicular to the, to the plane. So what does that tell you about the direction of the line? the vector giving the direction of the line. What would V be? Yeah, the same as N, correct? Because N is par always parallel to this line. So the direction of the line we're gonna, is going to be the same as the vector describing N. So that's 1 minus 1, 2. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, can you speak louder? It can, yeah. He's asking, can we do the negative of this? Sure, we just need to know a, a vector that is in the direction of the line. We, it doesn't really matter which direction we, we look at. And the difference that's going to make is, how, is in how we count t, right? If you switch the direction, then you'll be counting t differently to get a different point. So it really doesn't matter. So, you know, very good point. We could also do minus 1, 1, and minus 2. We just need a direction that the line is parallel to. Doesn't matter what, which way you want to point. Um, so let's, let's work with this one. It really doesn't matter, right? And therefore, the equation of the line Looking at, uh, at the previous page, if you haven't memorized the, the form, the x component is the x value of the point plus the x component of the direction. So 5 plus 1t, and then 3 minus 1t, 4 plus 2t. Okay, so that's the equation of this line. That's not too bad. Questions? Okay, now I'm gonna, yeah. I'm sorry, you need to speak up. I, I have trouble hearing you. Is it, is it required to express the equation? Uh, well, 
I'm, I don't think I understood exactly what you're asking. Oh, 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 the, in the uh, parametric form. It's the same thing, right? It's the same equation in whatever form you feel like it. Here I'm leaving this in a vector form, but you're right, absolutely, I could have written this in this form if I want to. Okay, keep in mind that we're dealing with the form. He, the difference here is just the form, okay? It's the same equation for the same line, but just different form. So, Absolutely, you could do that one. Or if you want to do, you can do the symmetric form with, with a T taken out. It's up to you. Okay, I'm gonna add a follow-up question to this example we just did. Let's find out at what point At what point does this line intersect the plane? The line we just found and the plane that we were originally given. Again, let's try to visualize what we're de dealing with here. This is the line, that's the plane, and now we're looking for what this point is. And we have the equation of the plane and the equation of the line from on the previous page. Okay, so what do you think? Oh. How do we find this point right here? Let me hear from somebody on this side. Come on. All right. Okay, guy in the back, what you got? I can hear you. Good. So notice at this point, the key, the key thing here is at this point, the same point is on the line and the plane. Right, the line and plane will have in general different points on, uh, on themselves, but at this specific point, they have the same x, y, and z value. So what I can do is I can look at the, the line, the equation of the line we just found. and look at the plane, the equation of the plane we were given. And if they contain the same point at intersection, that means on this plane right here, x is equivalent to phi plus t from the, from the line. So I'll take this one, put in there for x, take that, put in there for y, put this, take four plus two t and put that in or z, and that's gonna allow us to find the value of t for that point. Once we have t, we can use the line to find the equation, uh, to find the, the coordinate of the point. Okay, so let's do that. We get five plus t minus three minus t plus two, four plus two t is equal to eight. And simplify this a little bit, we get, let's see, um, 
t plus, two, plus t plus 4t, so that's 6t equal to, we have 5 minus 3, that's a 2, plus 8, and there's an 8 on the other side, so that gives me negative 2. This means that the intersection happens at t is equal to minus 1 over 3. And once I know what, at what t it happens, the line will provide me everything I need to know to find the x, y, and z components of that point. From the line equation, now we know the intersection is at x is equal to 5 minus 1 over 3. And that's 14 over 3. And y is 3 plus 1 third. That's 10 over 3. And z is 4 plus 2 times negative 1 over 3. That's also 10 over 3. Okay, so that's the point where the, the line is going to intersect the plane. Okay, the key part here was to realize that at that specific point, that point belongs to both the plane and the line. So you can take the expression from the line into the plane and find t. Questions? Nope, good. Let's try this next one. Let's find the equation of the line of intersection of these two planes. Right, so we got this, these two planes. One is x plus y plus z is equal to 2. The other one is x plus 7y plus 7z is equal to 2. And you can all visualize this, the intersection of two planes. For example, looking at where the wall meets the floor of this building, in this room right here, that's the intersection of two planes. And we see that's a straight line, right? And we want to find the equation of that line for this situation here. Let's try to visualize this again. Here are my two planes. Okay, so once again, we're dealing with three-dimensional situation on a two-dimensional paper. So we got to have some kind of perspective thing going on here. But can you picture the situation in your head? Two planes intersecting each other? Yeah? This is the line we're looking for. So let me extend this line to just a little bit. This is the line that we want. Whenever we're looking for a line, we still need the two ingredients that we need for any line. We need one point, and we need a vector telling us the direction that this line is going. Let's look at the, this situation from the side.
So on this side, this plane is going to look like a line, right? And then this other plane is right here. We'll call that plane one, and call this plane two. Plane one is going to have some kind of vector perpendicular to it. We'll call that N1. Okay. Plane two is going to have some kind of vector perpendicular to it. Um, right here, let's call that N2. All right, so first thing first, how do we find the vector v for this line we want? What do you think? Right, very good. So if you look at this from the side here, you know when you do a cross product of n1 with n2, you get a vector that's perpendicular to both of them. In this situation, it'll be coming out of the page or into the page. And Looking at this view here, that would give us a vector going this way or that way. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, so the vector V for the line is either N1 cross with N2 or N2 crossed with N1. Once again, N1 cross with N2 will be coming out of the page in this situation. N2 cross with N1 will be going into the page. And in this view here, this could be N1 cross N2, for example. Right? Okay, so that part is pretty easy. And once again, you can choose that V to go in either direction. So you can do N1 cross N2 and, or N2 cross N1. Um, I'm going to just arbitrarily choose to do N1 cross N2. And I'm going to call the first plane that we encounter, I'll call that plane one. The first plane is x plus y plus z is equal to two. The coefficients of x, y, z are one, two, and three. So n1 for the first plane, n for the first plane would simply be one, 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 right? And then the second plane would be one, seven, seven. <coughs> And this cross product is very easy to do. So we'll just jump directly to what it should be. And you should be able to verify this very, very quickly. OK? OK, so we got half the ingredients we need for a line. The next thing we need is one point. Let me bring back the uh, situation we got here. That line and both of these planes actually extend forever. We're only seeing a, a small part of it, but 
they actually extend, extend to infinity in all directions. And so, therefore, we just need one point somewhere on this infinite line here. Just one point. That's all we need. Okay, and that's actually going to be a little bit tricky here. And anyone got any idea how we can find that? Just one point. One point on this line. It doesn't have to be any specific point, but just one point. What do you think? Find a point that's on both planes. Yes, that's what we need, but how do we do that? Okay, that's one way to do it. Yeah. That's one way to do it. That the two plane equations equal to each other. And that's a very good way to do it. But there's actually an even easier, easier way to handle that. Remember, this line extends forever. At some point, it's probably going to hit the xy plane, the yz plane, and the xz plane, right? At some point. Find out where the line intersects um, the xy, yz, or xz plane. And this will be an easier process than doing the first way, which is, which by the way, is a great way to do it. But this will be slightly easier because you know at the intersection with one of these planes, one of these numbers is zero. Right? So for example, if you imagine this line intersecting the xy plane, at that intersection, you know z is going to be zero, because that's the intersection with the xy plane. So let's try that and see what we can find. Okay, so first of all, let me bring back the, the equation of the equations of the two planes. At the intersection with the xy plane, z is equal to zero. And that point is going to be on both of these planes, the intersection of the two planes with the xy plane. So that means from the first equation, x plus y is equal to 2. If on the second equation, x plus 7y is equal to 2. And that allows me to solve for x and y together knowing z is equal to zero. That will give me my one point that I need. Okay? And you should know how to do stuff like this. We can solve for one of the variables, say y, and plug that into the second equation. Here, solving for x, we get negative 6x is equal to 14, 2, minus 12.
And that means x is equal to 2. If x is equal to 2, y is equal to 0, right? And of course, we are looking for the intersection with the xy plane, z is equal to 0. And that gives us this one point on the line. And I could have done the same thing, the same way, looking for intersection with the yz plane, for example. In that case, I would make x equal to 0, and so on. You can find, just remember, just need one point on that line. It doesn't matter what point. The point is to find an important, a, a, a convenient point by setting one of them equal to 0. Okay, now, now we got everything we need. The point on the line is that v we found earlier is equal to 0 minus 6 and 6. So the equation in the vector form is 2 plus no t, 0 minus 6 t, 0 plus 6 t. Now, depending on which point you found on the line, this equation will look different. And WebAssign is smart enough to know that you can use any point on that line. So when you, find, when you do a problem like this on WebAssign, don't worry about which point you find. WebAssign actually will calculate behind, behind the problem to know the point. You to verify that the point you have chosen is indeed on that line. And the equation, even if it looks different than the answer is, it's expecting in form, will still be more correct if you found the right point and the right vector. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Oh, by the way, how would you find the angle between those two planes? The dot product of those two normal vectors, right? So that's how you can find the, the angle between these two planes. Um, looking at this view here, the side view we had earlier, if you're looking for the angle theta, well, that's just simply finding the angle between two vectors. We can use dot product to do that. The angle between the two normal vectors will be the same as the angle between the two planes. Okay, so that wraps up 12.5. Yeah. How do we know? Um, because we get a meaningful point out of this. You're, you're absolutely right. We're not guaranteed that the, the uh, line will intersect the x, y, y, z, or x, z plane. So, for example, if you solve these two equations and you get no solution out of it, then that's telling you that the line will not intersect the point, the plane you have chosen. So choose a different plane. Okay? Good question. Okay, we're going to look at the t first part of We'll be looking at shapes in three-dimensional space. And we'll only be looking at the, the first part of this section. The, the section is actually quite substantial. We're only looking at half of it today. Starting with cylinder. Now, in everyday language, when, I say, when we say cylinder, we automatically think of a cylindrical cylinder, like a, like a soda can, for example. But mathematically, the word cylinder doesn't have to be a cylindrical can. Am 
mathematically a cylinder, is a surface that contains all the lines that are parallel to some given line. Okay, so what does this mean? Let's take the example that we are most familiar with. This is a shape that we probably automatically think when we say cylinder. So here's our circular cylinder. Now notice that this surface right here contains all of these lines which I'm putting in green that are parallel to some other line. For instance, they're all parallel to the line that goes through the symmetry axis. Right, so that makes this thing right here a cylinder mathematically. But a different shape that satisfied the same definition. For example, if I open up this can partially, I make a cut along one side of this and just open it up partially. I still have the same, still satisfy the same requirement here. This surface still contains a bunch of these lines that are still parallel to some other given line that I choose. Um, this one right here, this is called a parabolic cylinder. Because the outline of this, looking from the top down, for example, from the top looking down, we see a parabola. This one from the top looking down, we see a circle. Right, circular cylinder, this is a parabolic cylinder. It's not a cylinder in everyday language because we expect a cylinder to be able to hold something. This one, not gonna be able to do that. Okay, so that mathematically, that's what a cylinder is. Any kind of surface that contains a bunch of lines that are parallel to one another and also parallel to some line that you, you want to define. So the equations of these things all share a common feature. For example, in two-dimensional space, often you'll see written this way, R2, that means two-dimensional space. Y is equal to X squared. It's a parabola. Right, we all know that. Something like that. In three-dimensional space, now we're talking about every point defi defined by the location x, y, and z. In three-dimensional space, the equation y is equal to x squared
means the cross section is not affected by Z in any way. In other words, for any value of Z, the cross section is always y equal to x squared and that means it's the parabola shape that we're used to seeing. Okay, in three-dimensional space the missing variable means it doesn't matter what it is. Z could be three or one Anytime I look at that cross section, I always see this shape. So this is what we'll end up seeing. X, Y, and Z here. At Z is equal to zero on the X, Y plane. I see my familiar parabola like this. Now, if I change z to any other value, say z is equal to 1, I see exactly the same shape. If I make z equal to 5, I see the same shape, or, or negative 1, doesn't matter. Let's say this is z is equal to minus 1. And the surface is the collection of all of these things all the way from z is minus infinity all the way to z is equal to infinity. So if you want to visualize what's going on here, the surface that we're talking about in three-dimensional space, given the equation y is equal to x squared, is all of these parabolas stacked on top of each other. and we get this thing right here, right? All these things stack on top of each other. Every time you slice at any given value of z, you see exactly the same shape. z is equal to zero, z is equal to one, for example, and z is minus one over here. And you stack all of them up, you get your parabolic cylinder. Once again, the key here is the missing variable in the equation essentially doesn't matter. In any direction it goes, you see the same cross-sectional shape. Make sense? Yeah. Um, well, the cube has to be open. It can't have the top and the bottom because those will have lines that are not parallel to the rest. But you're right. You take a you take a you take um, a cube, remove the top and the bottom. Yeah, you got a cylinder. Absolutely, mathematically a cylinder. But in everyday language, maybe people wouldn't say that's strictly a cylinder. In fact, if you really think about it, a regular plane is a cylinder, right? I got all the lines parallel to one another, parallel to some other given line of my choice. But in everyday language, we would never say that is a cylinder. So we got dealing with a mathematical term that we also use in everyday terms, everyday situation. But you're absolutely right. All right, one more example of this thing here. Let's think about this. What shape is y squared plus z squared is equal to 1? What do you think? Say it again. 
Um, not quite. What do you think? It's a what? It's a pipe. Yeah, it's a pipe. It's a, it's a circular cylinder, right? There is no xing here. That means x doesn't really matter. So in our perspective view here, y squared plus z squared equal to 1 is a circle in the yz plane with a radius of 1. And for any value of x, I see exactly the same thing. So at x equal to 0, I see that. At x is equal to 1, I see the same thing. At x is equal to minus 1, for example, I see the same thing. So in the end, we stack all of these circles on top of each other, and then we end up getting a, a pipe is a very good description. Something like that. A tube, a pipe, a cylinder, whatever. Does that make sense? If you see a missing variable that tells you that variable extended to any number doesn't change the cross-sectional shape. If I slice at any x, I see exactly the same cross-section. It gets more complicated when all three variables show up. So we're going to do one example dealing with that. Okay, so here we got x squared plus y squared plus z squared, 4z squared is equal to 16. All three variables show up. So that's not a cylinder anymore. A cylinder always has one missing variable. That's how we get this kind of parallel situation going on. not dealing with a cylinder anymore. But we can still use an idea very similar to the cylinder idea. We'll look at what's called traces of these things. And the idea of that is to hold one of the variable hold one variable constant at a time. And that's going to give you one perspective of this shape. For example, let's let z be a constant number k, some number k. Then that tells us the cross-section at z is equal to k is x squared plus y squared equal to 16 minus 4k squared. And what shape is this? Circle, right? Circle. circle with a center at x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, z is equal to k. And the radius depends on k, of course. All right, so for example, if k is equal to 0, we have a circle set with a radius of 4.
What happens when k is 2? What's the radius of my circle if k, if k is equal to 2? 0, so that's a point. What about minus 2? Same thing. So this guy right here, this is k is equal to plus or minus 2. What if k is equal to 3? Then the circle doesn't exist anymore. There's no such circle at k is equal to plus or minus 3, for example. So notice here, implied in here, k must be between minus 2 and 2. So from one perspective, we see a circle. Now we repeat that. Um, and we're actually out of time. So what I'm going to do here is to finish the notes before I upload that. So take a look at the, uh, the finished version of this. I'll send you an email as usual so you'll see the finished notes. But basically, next we'll let y be k, look at the same situation, and then z, and then x be some k, and then put them all together. OK? I'll finish that up before I upload this. Have a good weekend. See you Monday. Yeah.